is. I don't know, we'll find out. But <laughs> it's going to be proper to sit up there for everyone to see as much uh, you know, exposure as we can get there. But it was a pretty, pretty cool moment uh, to share that yesterday. Had a lot of fun with it. And it was received uh, pretty well. So sold that in one minute. I had it in my cart. By the time I went to, to do the stuff, I, I couldn't get it. I mean, oh it, yeah, it sold out in one minute. Yeah. Um, I guess there was another drop this morning. I don't know if you were able to get in on that one, but uh, yeah, we didn't expect you know, how people were gonna react to it, uh, or you know. But I think it was like an hour or something, and it was gone. And eight dollars a bottle. It's going for a good cause, and uh, it's just a really fun partnership that we continue to do fun things. So uh, it's it's been amazing to. So I kind of see how it's all unraveled. They, they said it smells great. And that's everyone's first uh, comment is like, they're just so surprised that it doesn't smell, uh, you know, unpleasant. And it smells good, in fact, is what I would say. I wouldn't say, I'll pass it around too if you guys want to take a, take a sniff. But yeah, I think it's more citrusy, like fresh than anything. Um, I, I don't know. It was, I, I likened it to like a, a certain scent that I couldn't put my... No, finger on of like a hotel or like resort, like lobby. I don't know, something like that, like a chill vibe. Text messages yesterday. Yeah, know? yeah, a lot. Uh, I still got some people to get back to, especially on my, I haven't really looked at my socials, but um, yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, text me about something I never know I'd get texted about. So uh, pretty funny. I, I mean, I, I take everything I do very seriously. I want to do everything that I do to the best of my ability. Um, and as silly and, and goofy as that was, the more serious I took it, the funnier I knew it would be. So I really did like make sure that I liked the takes that I had and I took enough and that I was in the zone. I felt good about it. Um, and I think it was pretty believable. How involved were you with the uh, development of the fake fragrance or did they ha somebody else handle that? No, they, uh, they did a great job of keeping me you know, in, involved throughout the testing process. And by the end of it, I was very, very pleased with what we'd come down to. So, uh, you know, I got sent like little files to um, test, but uh, it's, it couldn't, turn, couldn't have turned out any better, I don't think. There were definitely some stages when it was a little too mayo-y, uh, I'd say, but um, it, was, it, it came out uh, really, really good, I think. We were actually, we filmed the whole thing here at the facility. Thank you, very thankful to the organization for allowing us to, to do that. And we were here from around four o'clock to midnight. So it was like an eight hour shoot, a uh, long day. Um, you know, we were probably out on one of these fields for an hour and a half for a one and a half second clip um, when I'm like smelling the jar. But, you know, all of it was worth it. And I'm very thankful for how their whole uh, media team, marketing team, uh, and the directors of the shoot and all that. It was a very well put together production and just really glad how it turned out. Oh, we haven't discussed it yet, but we know that it's going to be going to some charitable uh, donations. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to figure that out with them and um, see where that goes. How do you think things uh, went today? Just quick take on how the practice with you guys and how often it was good. It was up and down. Uh, I think that uh, they each showed some good things, and especially your know, first time, at least for me, in a practice environment going against another team like here at the facility. Uh, it felt good like there are no nerves for anybody we were out there just like especially with the scheme we're going against it's pretty similar to what we've seen throughout our team throughout camp so it was a good test for us and I'm, I'm you know proud of how we came out there and operated but uh yeah just got to be a little more consistent but you know we got good things done on both I actually don't know what the defense did but at least on the offensive side of the ball last week it seemed like you and Calvin had kind of figured each other out today that the two deep ones you didn't connect on you have a sense of what was off on those two uh, I don't know. I got to watch the first one. Uh, I got a, an idea of what might have happened, but I can't speak on it. And then uh, the next one, I just got to put it on them. Uh, you know, new route, new concept, something that we just now kind of trying out. So uh, we're we're right there. I know we are, and I, I know I'm going to make those throws. Uh, you know, when the season comes, but just got to keep working them. Just got to keep trusting him. He's got to keep trusting me. You get the huge plays from Jaquan. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, the two catch and runs. Uh, you know, cutting across versus man, beating the post safety across the field, that's special. Uh, you know, guys that are able to do that, um, have that feel and just have that explosiveness to turn those five-yard catches into huge ones, uh, it's really cool to see. We talked a lot about, uh, you know, learning the system and getting comfortable with it. And over the span of your 
quarterback way. What type of learner are, are you in terms of which way best? Are you you learn by doing, learn by taking notes and listening, turn by, learn by watching it done? What, what's your best way? Definitely doing. Um, I think not that I like need to make a mistake to learn, but um, just getting reps is I feel like at this position the only way to truly develop yourself. Um, but I do feel like I take coaching well, and I'm able to take coaching points out onto the field. Um, you know, I think there's, I've been put in environments that have helped me with that, just with the amount of different offenses that I've had to learn and the amount of different coaches I've had. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been able to do a good job of that, but I do think that I'm a learn by doing type of player. Well, you mentioned, the, you mentioned a moment ago just continuing to work with Calvin on that chemistry game. But, but do you like how you guys have been able to communicate in that process? Maybe right after the rep in the film slate? Like, how is maybe the back from a verbal standpoint going as you guys work to get that connection? Yeah, no, it's going well. I mean, instilling confidence in each other, uh, you know, being honest with each other when it's, you know, if we know it's something that was on one of us or the other and trying to be better for each other. And then also having coach, you know, all of our coaches, but especially Coach Callahan involved with it, to making sure that we know the timing and intent of the play and kind of how we see it married up with the footwork and um, with his route. So uh, he's done a good job of, of keeping us on time and, and making sure that we know and expect where I expect where he's going to be and he knows where the ball is going to be. So uh, we just got to keep working it, like I said, and I know that's going to be a big part of our offense. Bo Hardy, you mentioned how the, the play calling itself is, is kind of designed to make you distribute the ball to all the weapons. How, do you agree with that, and how much do you feel that's helping you make sure everybody gets some touches? Yeah, no, I think it also is just it allows us to play fast and not have us locked into one guy. Um, we, we have the ability to spread the ball around and create concepts to get certain people open. Um, but you know, if, if you're locked in, like, hey, we got to get Calvin the ball, or we got to get Trail in the ball, um, that's not the right way to kind of go through a play. So it allows us to just play loose and free, um, take the open guy when they're there, regardless of who that may be. Um, but they do a good job of trying to create concepts that give us throws in our first couple of reads of our progression um, that are often are open more often than they're not. So um, we're definitely gonna have certain plays dialed up for guys, but. It's not really on us to think about who the guys are that we're trying to potentially throw the ball. It's, it's the spots of where we're throwing it. Joint practice situation from instant learning when you get in the and then you're back out there and able to kind of do that again in this type of environment. How beneficial uh, is that? It's very beneficial. We're excited to get back out here tomorrow and do the same thing and work on some new situations, uh, getting down the red zone, doing some two-minute work. Uh, really, really valuable reps for, for us. But there's opportunities in the other periods to learn from what we saw today. Uh, we know that they're going to give us looks that they, we didn't get today and some compliments off of some things that they showed us, uh, just like we probably are with them. So um, it's just listening to our rules, um, taking everything in and, and trusting our eyes because a lot of what we've seen from you know, shell-wise, pressure-wise, it's stuff that we've seen from our, our defense. But we know that their Rolodex is uh, you know, pretty expansive, and they can throw a lot of different stuff on us. So we just got to be ready for it, uh, trust their eyes, and, and just play fast. Yeah, Jeff and I talked about it last week and we just wanted to do something to get everyone involved. There's not a lot of things you can bring 40, 50 people to, whatever, but uh, you know, Top Golf was uh, nice enough to have us and uh, get some bays for us. So we had, I think, like five bays where we were all just hanging out for a couple hours, playing some games, eating some food. Um, so that's good. We're going to look forward to keep doing more, more of those types of things during off days throughout the season. Ooh, I'm going to take, I think Jules, Julius Chestnut's the longest driver on the team. He's been playing his whole life, and he's a pretty solid player. But when he gets a hold of one, he's a good scramble partner. So uh, you know, he'll put that one out there, three, 340. But um, I'd say other than that, uh, Nick Westbrook Akine, he's a solid golfer. And then my fourth, probably go Mason Kinsey. He, he, he lies about his rounds all the time, though. He, he, is a, he gets like three or four mulligans around, but, you know, he's, he's still, he'll, he'll get in the 70s. But, um, no, I play uh, golf with Mason quite a bit, and he's, he's a good player. So I guess Josh, Josh. I mean, I feel bad not saying Josh. But the last times I've played with him, it doesn't look too good. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, thank you, guys. Can I get a spritz? Yeah, yeah. You guys all set? Yeah. So, yeah, no, no real um, 
injuries of note. We had a bunch of guys cramp kind of on and off, so you guys saw a lot of cramping. It got hot at the end there. It got long, which was good. Good, hard physical practice. Uh, really appreciate the Seahawks, how they came out to work. I thought we got great work in today. Uh, Mike does a great job over there. Um, it's a similar scheme, but he runs his version of it, and so that was fun to get a different look. And, and they got some good players on that side, on the defensive side. Um, I watched a period or two on our defense. I thought it was went well. I didn't watch all of it, so don't ask me too many questions about our defense. I didn't see it all. I'll watch the tape, and I'll get back to you tomorrow. Um, but it was really good work. I mean, we needed to fight through it. It needed to be hard. It needed to be physical, and I think we got all that. And, you know, both teams had a lot of energy, a lot of back and forth, but but no no real issues, obviously, so that was good. Trey? Right. Yeah, he just okay. cramped. Uh, and guys showed restraint earlier several times on both fields where it looked like it could have crossed them. Yep, guys. Yeah, really, really happy with the way our team handled themselves. Really enjoy the fact that the Seahawks did the same. It was good. There's a lot of talking and John, but that's football. Um, we all play within the rules today, and I thought that was good. Um, it's going to be, we're going to take it to the edge. That's just how it works. They are too. Um, but, but it was good to see it not escalate past that. And, and we played good, clean football, you know, for, for most of that practice. So that was good. You tried three deep cracks, didn't hit on any of them. Calvin on both seemed like didn't, didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to see. i got to see the tape to see what it looked like downfield. I was watching the protection on those, but um, couldn't quite tell. Didn't connect. I don't know if it was a combination of those guys got tired. Um, that was part of it. Um, so I'd, I'll have a better answer for you tomorrow once I watch it. But, yeah, I was disappointed we didn't connect on at least one of them. Seemed like you, you, in the game and here, haven't taken a lot of shots, and you've been talking about high percentage mm -hmm. completion plays. When you came in, you talked about, and I know you got explosive plays from like Jackson today. Yep. When you came in, you were talking a lot about those explosive plays. Yep. So what's the balance between the explosive plays and the high percentage completion? Um, a lot of that has to do with with down and distance. You know, we got into some spots today that kind of second and longs, some areas where where some of those play action explosives don't make as much of a difference. They're playing shell defenses, and they're not letting anything in front of them or behind them. So um, it's a little bit down and distance predicated. But yeah, there's there's some times I'd like to get a few more called in practice, and we just didn't quite get to all of them. I'm trying to get some runs off, trying to evaluate the line, too. Um, some of the play calling is a little bit strategic um, when we're trying to get looks at certain things or certain guys. So um, that's not to say that we won't have explosive plays and, and play action shots when we get going. But um, I'd say it's twofold. It didn't get many of them called, and you know, trying to get some more evaluation up front in the run game. Calvin had kind of figured it out. Did, yeah. did you think you were there? Was today maybe a step back? I yeah, know. I mean, it's never it's never a linear process. You know, there's there's good and bad, and um, some days are great, and some days you got to go take a look at where you missed and why you missed and come back the next day and try to fix it. You talked about, sorry, you talked about the protection and watching that today. How did you feel uh, it's good. about it? It was good. They got a couple good rushers over there. It was good work. Their interior players are good players. Um, so it was a good matchup. It was good for our guys. And like I said, it got we got tired and hot at the end of it. And I think that was good to see guys fight through that. Um, but I, I felt good about it. They, they had some wins. We had some wins. So um, I think that's what happens when you got two good teams playing. I think that was good good work to get. Jackson, did you notice Jaquan a couple of times? And has he shown improvement during the course of camp? He's getting better every day. And I think that's all you can ask for him. And uh, again, played well in the game, had a nice punt return. Had a really explosive play uh, today of 70-yard touchdown or whatever it was. That was a real touchdown. Um, so that's good to see. I think he, just, he he needs to keep stacking those days um, and keep making a case for himself. And, and again, he's he's got ability. We drafted him because we liked his ability with the ball in his hand. And I think those things have shown up in practice. Jaquan makes a play like that. Does it make you want to see what he could do with the ones in case you were to play in the game? Yeah, he's, he's one of those guys that if, you know, you're carrying six receivers and you're carrying them on game day, he's going to have to contribute in some way, shape, or form. So there's there's opportunity for him, for sure. Um, and as he keeps making plays, just like all the other guys, they'll, they'll keep having opportunities to, to keep moving up. So um, he's no different. He'll have a chance, I think, to, to get some more reps. There's a couple times it seemed like that Tajay really kind of stuck his head in there on pass pro and stuff like that. Is that a, a valuable part of what you are? Is that, yeah. How valuable is that when a running back's willing to do yeah, that? Yeah, those guys are fantastic. They're, they're two of the best protecting backs, him and Tony. Uh, Tony had a blitz pickup today in a, in a third down. That was phenomenal. Um, those guys are fantastic. They know what to do. They know where to go with their eyes. And then they, the physical part of it, um, they can match that as well. So having two backs that can do that is, is I've never had two that, that are that good uh, equally in pass pro. And they're both ex excellent pass protectors. You mentioned having to watch the tape since you did, you were over on the offensive side. How valuable is it that you're getting, you know, Gabe, Julie, Lolly, Brownlee, are getting work against DK Metcalf and those guys? That's great. I mean, anytime you can you can compare those guys to what's out there in the league, and there's their trios is you know I'd put it up with just about anybody as far as pure talent. 
Um, those receivers are good on that side. And so to see our young players go against them, it's a great evaluation tool for us. Um, they're not scared. I know that. And, and it was to see those guys go out and compete against a really good group um, is going to be good. I can't wait to watch it. Um, it's going to be fun tape to evaluate. What do do outside, or is he going to make his bones as an inside guy? Uh, he can do. He, he's, he's trained at all the spots. Um, he's probably more natural of an inside player than an outside, but he's got the speed to play outside. Um, and that's that's part of part of the deal. So right now, most of those guys are all cross trained in the, in the backup roles. They got to be able to play all three spots. Um, I don't know, that's probably the best I can say it. You've got a lot of depth at, at slot. We do. Where yeah. Your back end receivers are going to come from. How much is that ability to play outside going to be a factor in determining who makes? It? Yeah, the utility role is, is a big one. You know, it's it's kind of why we cross train all those guys as best we can. Um, the returning part's a factor, and so if you're returning and you can play all three spots and um, fit in when we need people to fit in, that's where that's where their value comes in. So um, they're all training all those spots and trying to work them as best best we can. It's twofold because you're trying to give them spots where they're natural to have success and play well, um, and then we're trying to train them to do other things that maybe they're not as comfortable doing. Is there an expectation? A couple more, and uh, McDonald's starting about two minutes. If anyone did it now. Expectation Boyd will be back out there tomorrow. Is that just a rest day? Or is there yeah, no, I, I didn't mention that before. He has a, just a small um, bruise on his foot, so he'll be out a couple days. He may be act, back out tomorrow. He may not. Um, it's a day-to-day -day thing, nothing, nothing major. Do you look at the way that the offense performed today and, and you feel angry that they could have done more, or is it something where you feel like this gives you the opportunity to see what you have to see? Both. You know, there's there's definitely times where you get you get frustrated or you get angry that, that we left something out there. I thought we could have executed a particular play better. Um, that's certainly the case. Um, the flip side is that too, though, is you get a chance to see where you're at um, and where you need to go. And uh, getting an evaluation on players is the most important thing. But schematically, there's there's definitely times where I come off the field very angry. <laughs> um, and then there's times where I look at it from the positive viewpoint too of what what is what has been good and um, how do we keep doing those things well. But that's part of the training camp. That's the up and down. That's the coaching part. Um, you know, we never feel like we've arrived at any stretch, certainly. So there's always work to be done. So back to anything else tomorrow or similar plans today? We'll see a little more red zone tomorrow. Um, we'll jump down in the red zone for seven on seven. We'll have a team red zone period. So see a little bit more um, in the shorter field. Um, we'll still have a call-it period, and then we'll also get a two-minute period at the end of practice, um, see if we can't get the, work through some situations uh, in the two-minute drill to finish. Uh, tomorrow, does that help in the yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I think the, the key thing is that we're really not game planning against these guys. You know, we have a, a, an idea of their scheme, and it's good for us to go against a little bit different variation than what Denard does. Um, but it's more for us trying to evaluate our players against their players, you know, and, and get an evaluation against somebody else other than our own people and um, try to get a couple of the core things reps. So it's not really a, a game plan thing. It's more about fixing technique, um, any sort of mental errors that we might have had. Um, pretty standard process as far as that. No real game plan process involved, just going out and practicing and, and seeing what we are against somebody else.